the River Annan rises in the hills above Moffat and flows to its outlet at Anna on the Solway Firth. An ancient royal borough, steeped in the history of Scotland, that grew round a royal castle built by Robert the Bruce in the early 1300s. Annan developed as a port, as shipyards and as a centre of trade, exporting Scottish produce around the world. Little remains of its noteworthy history, just a few small fishing boats, perhaps a hint to its maritime history and crumbling warehouses that may someday become bijou apartments. It was here a young excise officer from Elgin founded a whisky distillery in 1830. George Donald found Annan a perfect site, a centre for commerce and tributaries of the River Annan for power and water from the surrounding hills for distilling. 53 years later, George Donald leased the distillery to a John Gardner who redeveloped the distillery. However, 13 years later, a Kilmarnock grocer by the name of John Walker took over the site to add to his growing whisky empire. In 1919, the Walker clan closed the distillery to concentrate on the development of their world-renowned Johnny Walker brand. The production fittings were stripped and the site returned to being part of the Robinson family farm that shared the valley site. Nearly a hundred years later, in 2006, husband and wife team Professor David Thompson and Theresa Church discovered the shell of the old distillery. With teams from the Glasgow College of Arts and Historic Scotland, they ensured that the building's lost history and the culture of Annandale Distillery were reconnected to the area. The plan would be, hopefully, that if we get planning permission within the next couple of months, that we can start work by late spring, early summer uh, of, of 2010, with a view to having the work completed by the middle of, of, of 2011 and starting distilling um, again, in, perhaps in the autumn, the summer and the autumn of, of, of 2011. David's predictions proved to be a little enthusiastic. Their desire for perfection, a hard and expensive road. Okay, well, in the early days, I was really very optimistic about how long the whole project might take. Um, I don't know, I think I maybe thought it would be over and done within a year. Well, that was uh, super optimistic, it has to be said. Uh, when we got on site, it just happened to be a much, much more difficult project than we thought. The buildings were really in quite a bad state. Previous uh, owners of the distillery had tried many elaborate means to deal with this, the ingression of water and had singularly failed. And actually that was the most difficult thing to do of all of them, making the buildings waterproof. And we've done it very successfully, but my goodness, it took a lot of time and money. The distillery is built on a split level and it was done that way for very sound reasons in the past because of course they were using gravity to um, effectively move liquid from one part of the distillery to the next part to the next part till they finally entered into the still. So it all started high and ended up very low. Now we think that originally it may well have drained through the wheel pits from the, uh, the, the various water wheels that were used to uh, mill, the, mill the, the barley and do various other things in the distillery, so it might have drained through there, they might, they might have acted as a natural sump. The plans included an L-shaped construction that would include the various facilities. However, Teresa felt this would not be in harmony with the old structure. To try and show everyone what Teresa meant, we ended up sketching it out using round this dinner plate. So we, we did this curved building linking the um, still house to the chimney. And that actually has proved to be a great thing because people think it's the oldest building in the site and it's actually the newest. That was another thing that really held us back, but I'm glad we did it actually. Reconstruction took seven long years, as not only did David and Teresa desire to bring back production to the distillery, but also ensure that the whisky produced would be of an exceptional flavour and stand out amongst its whisky peers. Guided by the late Dr Jim Swan, 
the eminent whiskey consultant. David, himself a professor in sensory science, took the elements of Annandale's traditional production and mixed them with a more modern approach, slotting them into what was left of the old buildings. David was also able to call upon the expertise of his own company, the MMR Research Group, who work with companies throughout the world, innovating new tastes and products to satisfy market trends. What better CV to bring back life to Annandale Distillery and two new single malts? And what we were looking for was what's known as white space in the map. So in other words, if you think of uh, unpeated whiskies, are there any areas on the, uh, on the map where there's a space? Because if there is, then maybe we could put a whiskey there. And actually we did find some spaces. So that was fabulous that we were able to actually do that. And it just shows you that science works, you know. Uh, and, it can, and it can greatly influence marketing too. In September 2015, the visitor centre was formally opened by Princess Anne. Her Royal Highness hammered in the bung of a cask that is now displayed till its maturation in 2025. Attention to detail of the restoration not just included the structure, but the furnishings, designed and created locally in Kirkubri by Ian Cameron Smith, whose appreciation of timber brings natural oddities and distortions to the furniture and fittings, somehow emphasising the history and craft required in the distilling of Scotland's most venerated beverage. I was very fortunate to meet lots of different artists and suppliers, the metal work and also the woodwork, which I think takes prime position. Ian Cameron Smith, based in Kukubri, helping us produce these beautiful tables, chairs, shutters, doors, staircase, as you can all see when you visit the distillery. Barley malt arrives at Annandale cured, then stored in hoppers before being ground and mixed in mash tuns with hot water. The sugary liquid, known as wort, then passes into large vessels and yeast added, converting it into crude alcohol or beer, ready for distillation in pot stills. I suppose Annandale Distillery is fairly similar to most other single malt Scotch whisky distilleries in much of its process, but not in the way that we distill. Uh, so we, we mash in the same way as most distilleries do, we ferment in the same way as most distilleries do, it's the next stage that really matters. So we have 12,000 litres of fermented liquid, it's called wash in, in whisky making, but you could call it beer in, uh, by any other name, except for the fact it doesn't have hops in it. And we take 12,000 litres of wash, which is about 8% alcohol by volume, and we put the whole lot into the wash still, and we boil it all up, and, uh, and what we're trying to do there is boil off the alcohol, boil off the relevant flavour compounds, and boil off flavour precursors, and that creates something called low wine, which, uh, which we capture. In the next stage of the distillation process is something called a, a spirit still, now, what would normally happen would be that you'd have a, a 12,000 litre wash still and then you'd have an 8,000 litre spirit still. Where we've done it differently is that we've got two 4,000 litre spirit stills rather than one 8,000 litre spirit still. And the reason for that is all to do with copper contact because during the distillation process in the spirit still, the contact of the boiling liquid with copper is profoundly important. Two things happen. So as the liquid's boiling inside, it volatilizes and then it recondenses on the inside of the still, runs down the copper wall and back down to the bottom. So we end up with very clean spirit. It's got lots of flavor, but we've taken out two of these main sort of compounds that are not very pleasant and that you wouldn't really want, want in your whiskey. And, and that's the trick. And I do think actually Annandale might have been the first to have one of these and it seems to have worked extremely well. So in November 2014, two single malt whiskies started to flow from the distilling process 
both with complex and contrasting characters. One with a peaty smoky expression and the other a non-peated fruity expression. Named after two famous sons of Scotland. The barrels to mature until the whisky comes of age. So we wanted to do something different uh, and, and we thought, well, what have we got regionally? And the answer was very simple, that two of Scotland's greatest icons are from this region. Uh, King Robert the Bruce was the seventh Earl of Annandale and his remnants of his castle are down in Annan town. And of course, Robert Burns uh, was an excise man in this area and certainly would have been in Annandale. So we came up with an idea that, particularly with Bruce, he lived and died with a sword in his pursuit of the Scottish crown. Uh, so we thought that Man of Sword was quite a nice uh, way of expressing it that could be kind of quite universally understood, uh, the idea of a warrior king and a man of sword. And it also gave us an idea that maybe we could do something for Robert Burns. And of course, he, he wasn't a man of sword, but he was a man of words. And words and sword are anagrams of each other. So that's how that aspect of branding came out. And we're unusual in that we emphasize that. Three years on, at noon on December the 1st, 2017, the first cask was broached by Scottish rugby legend Dodie Weir, and 99 bottles subsequently filled to mark the 99 years since Annandale Distillery last produced Scottish whisky. Again, Theresa and I would like to welcome you all to Annandale Distillery for today. Today we're going to bottle our very first, fill our very first bottle of peated whisky from Annandale Distillery. On June the 19th, 2018, a press conference heralded Annandale Distillery's first bottlings. These thoroughly modern expressions released a century almost to the day after the distillery closed are only available from Annandale Distillery, priced at £350 a bottle.